Uh, hello, everybody. Jordan here, the PH is silent, and I've got two very special guests with me, Mr. Matthew Lillard and Bill. I, how do I pronounce your last name? Is it Re Rior? R Rayor. Rayor. Okay, yeah. And so you guys are leading the charge with a brand new uh, streaming fun show called, uh, what is it? It's Faster, Faster Purple, Purple Worm Kill Kill. <laughs> there we go. Oh, we got marketing and everything. Right, right. <laughs> so we have lots of streamings like twitch and stuff that i mean we're not new to dungeons and dragons streaming but i think this is one of the few times i've seen it like on other platforms other than like twitch and things like that what made you guys jump into the ring and start doing all of this um well it's great uh, so first we you know we're, we're a company we started a company called yeah. Keto and so we've been around for five years one of the things that we were trying to one of the riddles we were trying to answer is how do we sort of get in the streaming world. We saw everyone having success, obviously Critical Role, yeah. Glass Cannon, like all these like all these brands were expanding on um on Twitch and all these different channels. And we were trying to figure out our way in. What's our voice? How do we do something like that? And listen, we tried some live play on Twitch. We tried mm -hmm. and we just it wasn't really working. Um and one day uh, Bill came up with this great idea, which is what if, you know, because also three hours is a lot. That's not how we consume it, mm -hmm. right? That's not how we consume Dungeons and Dragons. And we're a little older. We acknowledge that. But so Bill came up with this idea, like, well, the way you do a D&D &D show in less than an hour is to kill everyone. And that was sort of the joke that started a long, long <laughs> journey, which ended up in this TV show. I love it. And didn't you guys do this at Gen Con as well? Like you had a... I remember yeah. seeing Faster Purple. I was at Gen Con this last year. And so I remember seeing oh, yeah. Faster Purple Worm, Kill, Kill, Kill. Put there. I was like, what is this? It's kind of cool. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. So one of the really fun things about this show is that it's, um, uh, you know, when we when we take the show for TV, we did it in front of a live studio audience. Yeah. And it is very um, conducive to that environment. The, the audience is, is really essential for us as performers and for the type of show that it is which allows us to translate that into live shows. So we're doing a live show at PAX Unplugged uh, nice. in Philadelphia on December 1st. And hopefully we'll be able to continue doing that if people come out and support it. So um, it's just a great way to continue this uh, this way of telling D&D &D stories to mm -hmm. be able to take it out live and, and see people at conventions obviously is the best possible way to find your people when you're yeah. when yeah. you the D&D show. The conceit of the show, in case anyone doesn't know, it's it's four first level characters that go off into the world to become the heroes of legend and end up unfortunately meeting an iconic Dungeons and Dragons monster and getting completely obliterated. Every single episode ends in a TPK. Um, and it, there's, you think that there's some, that would get boring, it doesn't. It's <laughs> No, that's that's a. I love that premise for a show because there's uh, there's so many iconic, huge monsters. So my YouTube channel um, is all about like D and D lore and stuff. And you were graciously enough. Uh, you guys sent me the first episode, and I watched it last night. And I saw like in the intro, there's Orcus, and you've got like all these iconic things. You guys were talking about Tharizdin um, and Walk of the Size. You got a giant Tiamat behind you, <laughs> and so to have a level one character. <laughs> definitely in the show but there's a reason it's here oh excellent but yeah to have all of those like large monsters was it uh how did you get people on board for this i guess like do you just call up your friends and you have like a network of other D, &D people or it is pretty amazing that people were willing to to jump in head first on this thing but you know, part of it is is because Matt's so well known um, as as in the entertainment industry, mm -hmm. and that certainly helped us. But I think I hope that part of it was that people from the company, uh, you know, from us being in the space for five years, um, and and the, the the kind of company that we've built and the kind of products that we've built that we've sort of demonstrated our deep and profound love for D and D, yeah. and I. I hope that part of it was that these people sort of trusted us to be good stewards of the brand and that whatever we were doing was going to, um, you know, at least be honest and true to the love of the game. That's cool. Um, ha in the episode that I watched, you're the host, Bill. 
Um, yeah. And I think I saw in a trailer, Matthew, you're a player a couple times. Um, are you ever going to DM Bill or Matthew? Are you ever going to DM on the show? <laughs> uh, Bill will never DM unless he gives me the hosting job. And when he gives oh. me the hosting job, I'm never giving it back. <laughs> <laughs> No, uh, I'm, I'm the permanent guy. host of the show. That was okay. that was something that we decided um, because, you know, because we everybody dies, we have a new story, mm -hmm. a new DM, and a whole new cast in every episode. We wanted there to be some sort of consistent element on stage in every show, and so that's the host. So it's yeah. always me um, in every episode. So no, I will. And I will say this: I mm -hmm. for sure would have screwed it up many times, <laughs> and to Bill's credit. There, he does not miss a he does not miss a show. He is incredible. He's on point. He's he's in tune to what's happening on stage. I think that there was early on that there was a sense of nerves about am I going to screw it up? I have to plan things. And the more you know, we did we did three episodes a day. Um, we did twenty episodes all together. And by the end, Bill is really the center of the show and carries it through as a strength of it that that helps carry the show through and. He's fantastic. I did DM. Uh, I if you had offered, I would have paid ten thousand dollars to get out of it before we <laughs> before we started. I was so scared. Um, and listen, I, I barely pulled it off. So, um, no, so we I, will I, see I, this season. You're gonna have. You're gonna be in the DM spotlight. I yeah. am in the DM okay. spotlight. I am also in multiple episodes, and then I'm also the idiot that runs on stage. Nice for seventy percent of the show. <laughs> How uh, how many of do you film in a day? Something like this. Now I'm just curious because they are yeah. hour long shows, but like you yeah. have a live audience and stuff. What is that like? Yeah, so we did three shows a day. We had two audience load ins uh, a day. Um, is that right? Did we do two audiences? It, it ended up really being three. The, the, there were there was enough turnover between two and three that that it, it yeah. ended up being very different audiences. But yeah, uh, yeah, with very little break in between. So it was. It they were was, pretty arduous. Down. They were they were long days. And, and listen, you know, somebody we had explained to somebody is like, is there any improv? I'm like, every single aspect yeah. of the show is like live, is live gameplay, you know. And yeah. it's a little like you know, our early pitch was it's whose line is it anyways meets Dungeons and Dragons. Mm -hmm. um, but each show, I think one of the great things about the show is that each show has you know is a different style of play, is a different collection of of players. You know, I think one of the things we're proud of is it represents sort of the tapestry of the RPG community. Like, um, I just think, you know, we, we do, a, I, I think we're super proud of the casting that we did for yeah. the show. Um, and then, yeah, and then, you know, we, we have funny games, we have silly games, we have charming games, but I will say that each game cuts down to 48 minutes and and all of them, um, I think are they're all really, really, really fun and strong and i think people i think people inside the community are gonna love them but i also think the people that don't know dungeons and dragons this becomes like a love letter to the brand and to the game yeah i think you guys really capture at the table well um and yes when you actually play at the table you can go for three to four hours sometimes but there's always that like hour that you remember you guys are laughing so hard or um, I'm remembering the the audience, they got cursed or something. And so uh, they have to speak an octave lower. And there's like funny things like that, that you're like, oh, I forgot I had to do this. Or, oh, now I'm multiple characters. I have to remember that and swapping hats and stuff. So it it's a lot of fun. I think you guys capture that really, really well. Um, and I am excited to see more. When does this when does this start and where can we watch these things? <laughs> the channel launches uh, on November 13th and the premiere episodes for Faster Purple Worm Kill Kill are on November 16th um, at 9 p.m. both Pacific and Eastern. Cool. Um, and then we show on Thursdays and Saturdays uh, going forward. Nice. But it's on, uh, it's on Freebie on Amazon. Mm -hmm. So if you watch Jury Duty... Uh, that great show that came out last year <laughs> that's on the same Amazon platform. Okay. And Plex. Plex, yeah, yeah. They're doing a lot of uh, live TV and free streaming stuff, so that kind of makes sense. That's cool. Yeah. Um, so this is a whole um, this is a whole D and D Adventures channel. Uh, there, yeah. there were two other completely original new shows um, that were filmed alongside us. Uh, Encounter Party, which is sort of a longer form D and D show, that's great. And Heroes Feast, which is a cooking show that is themed to Dungeons and Dragons, that has some great guests, really, really entertaining show. 
Um, and hopefully that's just going to be the beginning of, yeah. of what D&D Adventures as a channel can be. And we're hoping that if people tune in and watch and support it and demonstrate that there's an audience out there, mm -hmm. that, uh, that that will open the door for lots of new and different shows about D&D &D and, and this sort of uh, lifestyle uh, game <laughs> yeah. that we all have. This life-changing game, I guess, because yeah. it really <laughs> keeps it going. Um, of all the, the guest people that you guys had on, do you have a particular favorite or is it hard to pick? Oh, God, oh, that that's a good so question. much trouble. <laughs> uh, we love them all. All of them are our favorite children. Yes. Um, but I will say this. I, you know, one of my favorites is Skeet. Skeet Allred, who was in, mm -hmm. I was in a movie called Scream. Skeet's uh, also in the movie. Has never, he's so handsome. <laughs> people like him, so don't play Dungeons <laughs> when they're young. Not uh, when we, we were never, growing up, that's for sure. Yeah, uh, but Skeet had never played, uh, and he came into a game that was red hot fire. Um, it's like he he a great DM. Um, he got great gameplay, and he came up with an idea what the game was. Uh, and he just sort of, it wasn't necessarily what he expected, but he rolled with it. He was funny. He was charming. Um, and he wins, right? I mean, he, he's got this, I think that everyone that we came, that came on the show have these moments, um, of winning. And so we're, we're proud, you know, it's sort of everyone has these, these moments that they can point to that they have this great gameplay moments. That's great. Yeah. And so they have a, a feat, even though their character's dead at the end of it. <laughs> you have this thing. Now I'm picturing like if the show takes off and five years down the line, you'll have, uh, I don't know, the afterlife where all the old characters get to come back. And... Oh yeah, listen, we talk about all the time. I mean, one of the episodes, you know, we everyone develops these characters. And we go through all this pre-production and they get on stage. Mm -hmm. uh, and the first thing we do is we change them all to goblins. <laughs> so they have like, you know, these heroic paladins and they had all these ideas and we immediately changed them into goblins. So with no crazy. warning to the players. They they genuinely have no idea this is coming. They're just told that on stage in the middle of the game and they're just, they all just roll with it and, and do a fantastic job. It's hilarious. There is, there is an element of the game that it's a little like whose line is it anyways, that mm. we keep throwing people curveballs, right? Oh, yeah. We keep shows different. Every show has these moments of you know, of taking suggestions from the audience. It, it does feel like if you've ever seen an improv game, um, it does feel like a live game like that. And, and, and that's what makes it so fun. Yeah, I think that's part of the fun and the charm is watching uh, the actors, their, their wheels turning in their head when you hand yeah. them that, that uh, offering. And they're like, oh, I'm not really sure. Um, yeah, well, Seth Green, I mean, yeah. you just want Seth to. And Seth Green is one of the funniest people I've yes. ever worked with in my entire life. <laughs> And his ability to take that, you know, that challenge mm -hmm. and run with it is like giving, you know, Bill made the analogy in an earlier interview. It's like giving in football, you want to give your the ball to the best players and let them do their thing, get out of the way. And Seth is certainly one of those people. Yeah, he was exceedingly funny uh, on the episode that I saw. <laughs> so I'm very excited to see more. Um, Beetle and Grimm is awesome. You guys are, are, are big. I mean, you've got uh, whiskey and a bunch of other stuff going on. And now this show, uh, what's, I mean, we have a, we have a Planescape Beetle and Grimm coming out from what I hear. Um, yeah. but what's next? What's the, like, are you guys going to, I don't know. I'm well, just curious. we have a, our yeah. relationship with D and D is 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 always going to be you know the uh, a, a a huge part of our of our company and and our identity and and that's our you know it's our first love it's what we grew up with and and so we have huge plans for D and D and you know more more platinum editions and and uh, these sort of you know curated box sets that we've been doing for them that that is a, a they're always a, a real joy to put together. Um, and then uh, we also have a we have a Kickstarter going on right now. Oh, that's right. Yeah, for a, yeah. A, an original game you guys created. Yeah, <laughs> that's yeah, awesome. Yeah. yeah. So uh, why the do you look so mystified? Really like, excited about that. Yeah. Did I say something? Oh yeah, go ahead. Yeah, wait, what'd you say? Oh no, you had this mystified expression on your face. <laughs> I, I misspoken about something. Oh um, no no. Uh, yeah, yeah. So we have a Kickstarter that just started. It's our first sort of um, completely original product that that we've come up with. Um, uh, it's our first board game. Uh, we're really excited about it. The support's been great for it. Um, Playtesting has gone really well. So 
Uh, it's called Ring of Chaos. So if you want to check that out, yeah. that's we're very proud of that. Well, I'll put links to everything down below in the video. I want to say uh, thank you guys so much for taking some time and chatting with me. This is a lot of fun. And I wish you all of the success with your show. I think it's going to be Listen, really good. We, we are, uh, you supporting us helps a lot. So thank you very much. Oh, you're Appreciate very, very welcome. Yeah, this yeah, was fine. super fun. Uh, so thank you. Thanks again, everybody. And we'll see you all in the next video.